Okay. So welcome everybody. Uh, Jill Ortiz, Driving Force Fitness and Nutrition. Um, you all, like I said earlier, you all are used to me talking about my muscles, <laughs> seeing me doing a lot of workouts, talking about my personal training um, and doing my virtual business, which has actually changed a lot in the pandemic as I was working at three gyms prior to the shutdown and I'm now working at zero gyms and I am now doing uh, all of my work virtually. But today what I wanted to focus on was more of nutrition. And um, so because of that, I really want to talk to you a little bit about my nutritional background and my, I guess, history with food over the years. Um, I am a nutrition coach. I am certified in portion control nutrition and mindful eating. But last year, uh, I have a client who comes to my house. Uh, she comes uh, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and we do a personal training session. And when they were open, she used to also go uh, once a week across the street from my house as a Weight Watchers meeting. And she used to go after our session every Tuesday. And she was talking one week about how Weight Watchers was changing their format, doing a new rollout of a program. And I said to her, you know, oh, that sounds like fun. My mom's been on Weight Watchers her entire life. She's 71 now. Um, you know, so I know a lot about Weight Watchers. I've done Weight Watchers in the past too. I said, can I come with you to the meeting? I'd be interested to see what they have to say. And so she said, yeah. So we went over across the street and she was in a long line getting weighed in. And I sat down, she says to me, Jill, go to the front row. I sit in the front row. My client is 73. She says, go sit in the front row. Oh, did my screen share stop? Um, and so I went and I sat down and I immediately oops, started crying. And I didn't know what was happening to me, but there was something going on. And I guess this is how Weight Watchers does it, but the woman who was leading the meeting asked me to stand up <laughs> and tell everybody why I was crying. I stood up in my personal trainer sweatshirt, uh, the youngest one by probably 20 years in the room, and said, I don't know why I'm crying. I couldn't stop. The tears were pouring down my face. I said, my mother has been on Weight Watchers my whole life. I remember a lot of, you know, are you sure you want to eat this? Are you sure you want to do that? I remember when I got my driver's license, my sister and I, we immediately went out and ate all the fried food that we could. Um, and so I left that day and realized that I needed some therapy because there was something going on with me and my relationship with food. Um, and so I'm going to move on a little bit. This is me now versus the me of before. Um, the Mia before this is when, uh, just a little bit after my son, Jackson, who's seven is, was born. So this is about a seven year difference. Um, and I feel like I want to cry when I see that girl on the left, this is the why that actually would make me cry today. Our topic is about our why, but man, the pain behind my eyes before, um, having no plan, having no idea what I was doing wrong with nutrition, having a broken relationship with food. It was always a very negative thing. Um, but not only that, I used food to comfort myself for most of my life. Uh, I studied abroad in high school in Chile. And then I studied abroad in, in college, I went to China. And in both situations, I can very clearly tell you that food was my comfort. Being so far from home, uh, being in a place where I hardly spoke the language, it was terrifying. And food was that thing that could let me shut my mouth or not have to speak at a meal with others. Um, I also found myself a lot of times at social situations, at parties. I'm an introvert and I'd rather stand by the food table and eat than have to talk to people. Um, but I also just had no idea what to do. Uh, I was an athlete my whole life. And after kids, I start. I was doing a lot less activity uh, obviously getting older and just unsure as to what I was supposed to do anymore. So um, I really had never followed a, a meal plan. Um, and I just didn't know at this point, this picture on the left, what I was doing wrong. A lot of people don't have a plan and that's not great. 
but a lot of people think they need to diet and that they need to diet really hard. Um, so this is kind of the opposite side of the spectrum. People who are really like, they're dieting so hard, they're so conscious, they're counting every calorie, they're, um, you know, they're trying to restrict themselves so hard during the week that on the weekends, those are the people, I don't know if this is you, but you might lose three to five pounds during the week and then gain them back every single weekend. It's a really, really vicious cycle. And it's like, I see it as, as a tennis match and the harder you hit that diet ball one way, the harder you're going to rebound the other way. And it's hard, not only on our bodies, but it's also really, really hard mentally. Can anybody relate <laughs> to that awful feeling, that great feeling of great. I didn't eat anything all week that I wanted to. And that awful feeling of why'd I do that? Let's eat everything in sight. So as we go into Thanksgiving, that's what I really wanted to focus on today is having balance, making that less of a tennis match. But let me go back to this, coming closer to the net, finding more balance and enjoyment in eating and yet staying closer to the net and having a little volley instead of trying so hard to diet and restrict that we're going the opposite way. Does that sound like something we could do is step closer and closer towards the center, right? And just try to get a little bit more towards the center and enjoy ourselves, but not go crazy one way or the other. So that's what I want you to think about going into Thursday with um, Thanksgiving, is I want you to enjoy the things you like, but I want you to be able to earn them a little bit and keep that healthy balance. So this is, uh, we call it the more sure model. It's something I teach a lot of my clients when we go through mindful nutrition and it's really great for holidays. It's a cycle where you need to go through the steps. So let's say you're at Thanksgiving. The first thing you do if you're going to somebody else's house is not grab a glass of wine when you walk in the door, but grab a glass of water and start there and give yourself a little bit of time so that you don't start drinking right when you get there because it might be a long time you're gonna be there. Um, the next thing is start with some vegetables and you can use this also for your Thanksgiving plate is load up on the vegetables because if we can start to get full and start there, then we have a better chance of not filling up with a ton of caloric foods after that. After our vegetables, which help us with that mind and that sense of fullness, then we can go on to protein. Protein sustains us. It is that thing that when we eat it, it sustains our energy. And so go for that lean protein next. Turkey is great, maybe with a little less gravy this year, uh, enough to enjoy the taste, but not to go nuts, right? Remember what your goals are and where you want to be after this meal. The next thing is that thing that you really want to have fun with. It's the carbs on your plate, right? Remember, the carbs are the sweets the breads, the rices, the stuffing, all those things are all the carbs and your alcohol is also your carbs. So choose wisely, maybe choose one or a little bit or two, and then take time to evaluate. Evaluate. You want more? Sure. But you got to go back through that cycle, right? You got to earn it. And it's going to just help you slow down a little bit. Having two glasses of water with those two glasses of wine is going to for sure help you, right? Does that model make sense to where you can enjoy those things that you really want to enjoy, but not go completely overboard and not be upset with yourself the next day, right? So what if you try <laughs> and you go in with a plan, but you kind of fail, right? So that's going to happen. Some of us are going to try and we're going to maybe it's new, right? Maybe we haven't done something like this before. So for those who try and don't do fantastic, um, that's when I bring in my savior, my secret weapon. It's my five-day kickstart cleanse. It's a five-day uh, meal plan full of carbs, don't worry, um, that you will feel satisfied on and it will help you lose all that bloat from that Thanksgiving meal or weekend. So if you're interested, then I encourage you to definitely uh, reach out. If you go to the bit.ly roadmap call, then you can uh, sign up for a time with me. And um, 
let's walk through and figure out if there's some minor changes or big changes that we need to make with your nutrition. But I'd also love to know how you do. If you'd like some healthy Thanksgiving recipes, I'm happy to share my healthy Thanksgiving recipe guide with you. It's also on my blog. If you go to jillortisfitness.com and look on my blog, you can grab that right from there. Um, if you're interested in doing my cleanse, I'm setting everybody up to start next Monday all together uh, as a supported group. So does anybody have any questions? We'll take five minutes for questions or two minutes. No questions. Is everybody afraid I'm going to yell at you? For I just want to say you rock, Jill. <laughs> you always rock it. So great presentation and you rock. You're such an inspiration to so many people. Thank you. If anybody has any feedback and wants to either throw it in the comments or email me, feel free. Definitely set up uh, a one-on-one -on -one with me. Rick, what you got? All right, Jilly Jill. So what do you do when your spouse is not on board with your desire to, you know, eat healthy, stay in shape or get in shape? And this is a big problem, you know, like one wants to, one doesn't. And how do you, how do you navigate something like that when so many of us are have a significant other or children and we have to prepare meals for kids and spouses. And that's always seems to be such a, such a challenge. It's tough. I, it is tough. I made granola and trail mix for Jay and the kids yesterday. And I definitely ate some of that too. I think that number one, you can't control your spouse. It's got to be their decision. It's never going to go well if you're trying to force what you want for yourself or somebody else on them. Um, otherwise, we'd all have, we'd all be skinny. We all have skinny, you know, spouses. Um, but I think that you need to have that serious talk with your spouse and let them know what's important to you and what you're trying to accomplish. Let them know you'd really appreciate their help. Tell them what helps you and hurts you the most. And if they want to make that, you know, um, something that, that they're part of, then that's great. But ultimately you kind of have to take that ownership of your own goals and start to learn. Like my kids are always going to have cheeses in the house. I can't blame them. If I eat them, I am Jay's like, I know you always blame them and you always blame us for the chocolate chips, but you can't blame them. You have to know your goals, but that's also why you have to not completely restrict yourself unless there's foods that you know, you have no control around then those ones you want to make sure at least are out of sight, out of mind, right? If they're out of your sight, you're not going to, you know, don't keep those things on the counter. But um, I think that that can help. But ultimately, it's you, it's your goals, and you have to take ownership of what your plan is and do your best to stick to it and at least let your family know what your goal is. And hopefully, when you start showing those habits, they catch on because I do think that's contagious, right? I think Jay's habits have changed a lot with mine. Anything else to add? Dr. Jody? I have a question. Yeah. Um, so Jill, what do you tell your, the people that you work with that one, don't like the taste of water or if they wanna eat that, that snack food, is there a certain time of day that maybe would be better to indulge you know, and to stop having it by a certain time? Like if you can give us some parameters on that. Yeah, water, there's great infusers. I have an awesome water pitcher that I throw stuff in to infuse water. I also drink, uh, and I know that Judy, I saw you ordered more yesterday. We have a drink, uh, a tea that you can add to your water. It's called a bevy, which it not only makes your water taste great, and I add seltzer too to mine and a lime uh, every day, but it helps to curb your hunger because it also has, I think it's three grams of soluble fiber in it. Um, but definitely adding your, adding things to your water, making it, uh, taste better, non-calorie things, um, cucumber water, it's like being at a spa, uh, so many things that you can do, um, to make that water taste better, but ultimately it's also just getting used to it and knowing how good it is for you. Um, then with regards to time of day, I think you have to figure out what the struggle times of day are. Um, and work with those. If you can master that time of day, that's the hardest time of the day for you. Um, then I think that's a real help. But otherwise, I think that, um, you know, it's something that's a one on one basis as to when we put things in, I think for the most part, 
the biggest rule is crowding out the bad with the good, right? So adding more vegetables, adding more healthy foods so that you're not inclined to eat the others or swaps. I love making swaps. I will never give up nachos, pizza, Chinese food, all that stuff, just make it healthier. So um, I want to move on because I want to make sure that we finish out our presentation. But if you guys, and I'll come back to these comments, I see them coming through. Uh, I just thought I need an upgrade. Oh, for Jay. Okay. Uh, if anybody knows anybody and wants to connect me to a new husband. Uh, <laughs> Um, but anyways, you the rest. You uh, to we were talking about a bigger diamond. You need a big, an oh, Rick you get a another diamond. diamond and I said you need an upgrade. <laughs> Great. I would love a diamond upgrade. <laughs> um, but I know Jay wants a truck too. So if you would like to talk more, oh my God, I could talk about this all day. I have a million answers for everything. Set up a face-to-face -face with me. That's why we do these showcases. And if you would like to do a workshop like this within our meeting too, um, let Dr. Jody know because we have some openings and we'd love to learn more about your thing. Um, let's go back to the presentation quick. Let me find it. Bill, I don't know if you want to stop recording or if you want to keep doing it. Oh, yes. Thanks, Maggie. 